Hello, my name is Alicia Turner and this presentation is on animal hoarding and the welfare implications on animals. In this short presentation I will highlight the common welfare concerns associated with animal hoarding and the consequences this means to animals. It will introduce what animal hoarding is and the state some key statistics of animal hoarding to demonstrate what cases were like in 2007 and nine years later on seeing if there has been much change in the animal hoarding sector. It will go on to analyse research that links animal hoarding to mental disorders and what that means for the animals. Then it will list the three types of animal hoarding and the reasoning for keeping a large quantity of animals. For example, are they hoarding them for exploitation or for the care for them? It will continue by listing the welfare concerns Link closely to animal hoarding and how the animal's welfare is in, can be improved by rectifying these concerns. It will lastly go on to highlight the effects in the animal's life and how it affects them temporary or long lasting. Then what action it takes to hoarders and how the legal system deals with animal hoarders. Highlighting that some treatments are available for hoarders and education is the key to improving an animal's welfare through their owners. Animal hoarding is dealt with many authorities such as social services, animal welfare and legal science. Often animal hoarders fall between the gap due to poor communication between authorities. Animal hoarding is one of the biggest current challenges faced by the RSPCA and other animal welfare organisations in the UK. It is estimated that there are 700 to 2,000 new cases of animal hoarding in the US every year. Animal hoarding is defined by the keeping of larger than usual number of animals without having the ability to properly care for them. An animal hoarder is defined as someone who has accumulated a large number of animals and who fails to provide minimum standards of nutrition, sanitation and veterinary care fails to act on the deteriorating condition of animals, including disease, starvation and death, and the deterioration of the environment, severe overcrowding, extremely unsanitary conditions, and often is unaware of the negative effects of the collection of their own health and well-being and on the other family members. Animal hoarding has been gaining more attention from researchers in various areas of study, including sociology, psychology and veterinary fields. Hoarding is not defined by the number of animals but often involves more than a typical number of companion animals and when the number becomes too many for the owner to adequately provide for them. Animal hoarding is becoming more present in the recent years and does not seem to be declining rapidly. This poses welfare concerns to the animals involved. Research has shown that the majority of hoarders are women and this statistic hasn't changed much over the years. Demonstrated in these two papers, women being 83 and 78% of the sample. Biologically, women are known to be more emotional and therefore like having company and become maternal to companion animals. This can be reflected in the status of these women in the studies, with many of them being single, divorced or widowed. This could be the reason for them acquiring a high number of companion animals for company. The paper raises welfare concerns through the conditions of the house that the animals were found. Unsanitary conditions can affect an animal's health along with, along with leading to abnormal behaviour. Therefore, a direct welfare concern that needs to be highlighted for improvements to be made for the animals that are being hoarded. Papers like these are important to track cases of animal hoarding and if enough is being done to protect animals from hoarding. These two papers show a small decline in over the nine years, however, more would have been expected to be done, but it is difficult to draw a conclusion on just these two papers alone. Also, it's hard to get a representation for in the UK as both of these papers are global. Hoarding is associated with obsessive compulsive disorder, bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. 
Animal hoarding can be an addiction. The person must satisfy an urge to help or rescue another animal or simply add to their collection. Most common mental health disorder associated is delusional disorder. Failure to see the problem of the number of animals they have and often are in denial. Motivations and complexities behind animal hoarding are different enough from other kinds of hoarding that is ought to be classified as a different type of mental disorder. However, researchers like Graham Frew, clinical psychologist who studies hoarding behaviour at the University of Oxford, is not convinced that this isn't distinct enough to stand on its own. However, the medicine used to treat OCD patients does not effectively treat hoarders. There are three types of animal hoarders, all with different intentions. Based on the person's intentions depends on which type of animal hoarder they are. It is stated that all animal hoarders can be placed in one of these three types and often do not overflow into more than one type. Overwhelmed caregiving hoarders are common when they do not prevent the unwanted pregnancies of their animals. Failure to neuter can cause animal numbers to multiply quickly and become out of hand. Therefore, the hoarder passively, passively requires these animals and not actively searching or wanting more animals. They are more aware of their situation and seek help. A change in circumstances can be a factor to the number of animals. Acquiring animals from family and friends that they no longer want or from ex existing animals having babies. They are likely to be socially isolated and acquire original animals for company. Rescuing or mission driven hoarder actively rescues and rehomes animals to prevent these animals being euthanized. They fear death themselves and do not want any animals to unnecessarily be killed and want to provide care for these unwanted animals. They all ultimately feel they are the only ones that can provide care for these animals and actively collect animals. Exploitive hoarder lacks any empathy with animals or humans, but can be charming actively to be able to go out and access more animals. They are often controlling and overvalue their own expertise. They have absence of guilt and remorse and likely to reoffend if not rectified or punished. These hoarders will have other intentions in mind other than the welfare of these animals, such as financial benefits. It is important to highlight welfare concerns that animal hoarders cause towards their animals. An owner is legally obligated to ensure that the animals have good welfare and are protected from unnecessary suffering. Therefore, when animals are hoarded and their welfare becomes poor, it's important for the authorities to intervene for the animal's benefit. The Hoarding of Animals Research Consortium highlighted several welfare concerns that are frequently linked with animals that are hoarded. They mentioned poor nutrition, lack of medical care, unsanitary environment and abnormal social structures. All these negatively affect the animal's welfare and can cause and are caused by their owner. Barry et al. 2005 supports that this by stating that hoarders fail to provide proper food, water, shelter and a sanitary environment. Poor nutrition is often observed in animal hoarding cases. This can be due to a lot of different reasons such as financial problems of the owner, variety of food, balanced diets and communal feeding, resulting in each animal not getting enough food. Access to food and, and different dietary needs of the animal are often hard to obtain and track in hoarding cases due to the amount of animals that they keep. Malnutrition in animals can affect their cognitive development experience for a long period of time. It is also makes the animal become weak and more likely to become ill. Malnutrition is, important, is an important welfare concern and owners causing this to their owners are failing to meet their welfare standards. The Animal Welfare Act 2006 state that an animal in this state of malnutrition is unnecessary suffering, therefore are not meeting the animal's basic needs. Food and water are often absent in this case and Platonic 2008 stated that in severe neglect, neglectful cases animals have resulted in cannibal, cannibalism to survive. Lack of medical care is often the case in animal holding due to not having the funds for all animals to see a vet. 
A hoarder can have anything from 30 onwards of animals, and to pay for each of them to have medical care can add up to a substantial amount. If the animal is hurt, but the owner cannot afford the veterinary cost, then the animal will be left to suffer in pain. The injury can gradually get worse without treatment and the welfare of the animal will slowly decrease. Leaving an animal to suffer is not acceptable, but in the case of animal hoarding, this can be seen. Owners cannot afford to get their animals spayed and neutered, and this can be a contributing factor to the why they have such a number of animals. Therefore, providing animals with the medical care and treatments is important to ensure that the animal does not suffer and the welfare is high. The environment that animals are hoarded in are usually unsanitary, which harbour diseases. Diseases raise several welfare concerns for the animals being hoarded, humans living in the house and also wildlife that could come in contact with diseased animals. Due to a large number of animals being hoarded, there is less room for each animal, resulting in some birds and rodents in small cages, too small for them to express natural behaviours. The more animals a person owns, the less space is available. Animals need enough space to escape from other individuals, hide and explore. Being kept in smaller cages is a welfare concern for, for behaviour, but also cages will become more dirty quickly, therefore need cleaning out more. Patrick Tranick, 2006, highlighted that hoarding conditions lack the ability to exhibit species appropriate behaviour, inappropriate housing conditions, absence of enrichment, absence of specific appropriate mental stimulation and unsanitary living conditions. All these are welfare concerns and are a threat to the animal. Lastly, due to the high number of animals, social structures can become complicated and not balanced. This would lead to increased aggression in some animals causing injuries and stress. These social structures are important to keep harmony among long, large groups and if they are not balanced, then it poses a risk of aggression. These disagreements among groups can cause stress in other animals and if this is prolonged and the animals can become distressed. When an animal is in a state of distress, uh, this is a major welfare concern and should be rectified immediately. When an animal is stressed, it will alter the animal's eating and drinking habits, its behaviour and its overall health. Therefore, having the correct social structure will ensure that the animals are happy with their environment. The effect on animals from these welfare concerns are that the animals often are stressed in normal environments due to the lack of exposure to a variety of situations. Therefore, rehoming animals that have been hoarded is difficult. The abnormal behaviours needed to be rectified for them to be rehomed in a family setting. Animals are often not as domesticated as the average companion animal. This is because they have a lack of attention from the owner and have to fend for themselves. If an animal is rescued and not able to be rehomed due to behavioural problems, then the many shelters euthanize these animals, raising ethical concerns. Therefore, the main effect to animals is their quality of life. Being kept in sanitary, unsanitary environments with no food or water and no medical care is not a life worth living. Some animals have poor health issues and this can be a problem for when they're getting rehomed. Some can have long-lasting health conditions due to the conditions they are kept in and people are reluctant to rehome these animals. Most animals are taken from the hoarder, leaving them with the unmanageable number of pets. The person either surrenders ownership or they are forcefully taken under the Animal Welfare Act 2006. These animals are taken to rehoming shelters and if no health or behavioural problems, they are later rehomed. A checkup visit is done to evaluate if the person has improved the environment and the remaining animals have appropriate care and welfare is no longer compromised. If the person is still compromising the welfare of the remaining animals, these are taken and the owner can be taken to court or sometimes result in a pet ownership ban if the neglect was intentional. Animal hoarding cases are left to animal welfare organisations to resolve through prosecution for the cruelty to animals. There are many treatments for animal hoarders. Education is a major part, advising animal owners to spay and neuter pets to prevent unwanted animal pregnancies and ultimately prevent animal numbers from increasing out of control. Medication is also a method of treatment. Many hoarders take medication like antidepressants and selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. 
SSRI. These help with the obsessive thoughts behind the hoarding, but are not a long-term solution. Medication is morally taken alongside cognitive behavioural therapy. These access the root of the obsessive thoughts and the cause. The person is taught strategies to subdue the thought and manage the illness. CPD specialises for hoarders and medication are effective strategies in object hoarding cases and holds promise for those suffering from animal hoarding. To conclude, animal hoarding raises many welfare concerns to animals and puts these animals in harm. Animal hoarding is a recognised mental illness with treatments available to help these people suffer from the illness. However, many animals are being subjected to poor nutrition in adequate environments due to the lack of awareness and difficulty identifying animals in need. Therefore, more needs to be done to educate people to speak up and to assess when an animal's welfare is poor and should be flagged. Society's view of animal hoarding continues to evolve. It is a promise in that it is increasingly seen as a serious human and animal welfare issue that requires entire communities to effectively respond.